What's going on everyone? Steven here. Today I'm going to walk you through your first day and night in Seven Days to Die. Um, and we're just going to start from the very beginning here. This game can be very overwhelming, especially if you're new. So we're going to be rolling through a lot pretty quickly, but um, I just want to get as much out there, you know, kind of while I'm playing and give you hopefully a good enough perspective to have you feeling comfortable. So, of course, this is for people who are pretty much first getting into it. Um, so what we're going to do is start a new game. And you can name um, your game whatever here if you choose Random Gen. You can choose Navisgain, which is the sort of handcrafted map. Um, so there's a lot of unique uh, points of interest and things that the devs have specifically put in that you might not necessarily see in Random Gen. I like Random Gen, personally. Um, so I'm going to do Fun Time Random Gen, yay. Um, and the, your game name um, acts as a seed to randomly generate the world. So you should be able to put the same thing in if you have this version, Alpha 16.4 B8 Build 8. Um, and hopefully it will kind of put you in the same world if you want to follow along. So I have Survival Single Player here. Um, a couple of things that I like to do. First, go to Standard Options. I like to set my daylight length to 18. So that gives me more daylight time than night. Um, so it allows me to get more things done. Just kind of how I like to play. You can keep it at default if you want. Uh, also in Modded Options, um, sometimes I'll set this to 90 minutes if I want a really long, if I want really long days. Uh, but you can see the settings that I have here. Um, one thing I definitely change is uh, mark airdrops. I'll turn that on, and so that'll give you an icon up in the top uh, bar in the game that will show you where your airdrops are. So I like to turn that on. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and hit start here, and it's going to generate the world. So while it's doing this, um, it's going to dump you in one of any number of biomes, right? So you can either be in a desert and you have to worry about overheating and your thirst, um, or in a like a snowy wintry biome like you see here on the screen. Um, and of course, then you have to worry about being warm. And then there's kind of like a neutral green biome. Um, there's like a dilapidated, derelict biome. Uh, and I think that's about it, pretty much. So once you jump in, um, for me, what I like to do is my first seven days. Okay, so basically the premise of the game is every seventh day there's a horde of zombies that comes after you and tries to kill you. Um, so by each seventh day, the horde gets more difficult. So day seven, day 14, day 21, each one of those days gets more difficult. So you're presumably building your defenses and all this stuff in preparation for that. But there are some things that you can do like on day seven or any of the days really where you don't have to be worried about the horde. So you, I, what I like to do is go find a really tall building to just camp out on the first uh, horde night because it allows me to really start building up and preparing for later. Uh, when I first started playing this game, I didn't do that. I tried to see if I could survive, which is also fun. So there's a number of ways that you can approach playing this game, which is one reason I enjoy it so much. So anyway, let's see which biome we're in here. It looks like we're in a grassy one, uh, which is good. Pretty neutral. See up here, this deer or elk, whatever it is, um, you know, you can hunt animals and get meat and stuff like that, which you're going to want to do later. But anyway, you jump in here, it walks you through some of the basics of survival. Uh, you have a few things to start with, some water, can of chili. This first aid bandage will slowly replenish your health. You've got a torch to see at night and a land claim block. And what the land claim block does is when you place it, uh, one thing it allows you to do is in multiplayer, it adds additional hardness to your block. So if you're building a house or something like that, other players that might try to come in and raid your base, it's going to take them longer to break through your blocks. It's not impossible, but servers have different settings for that, so sometimes the hardness might be infinite, so players can't break in. Um, anyway, 
In single player, what land claim allows you to do is if you've built uh, like a workbench or forge or anything like that, you can use a wrench to then um, take them with you after you've set them up. So if you don't have the land claim block placed and you go to use a wrench on, let's say, a workbench, it'll start disassembling it and giving you pieces like forged iron and wood. So it actually breaks it apart. So you need that land claim block if you want to take things with you. Okay, And you can make more land claim blocks later. So if you screw up with this one and place it somewhere, not too big of a deal. You can have multiple land claim blocks in different places. So anyway, let's go ahead and jump in here. I'm going to click continue. All right basic survival okay up here in the upper right hand corner you can see what you need to do and by the end of this it'll give you some experience points which I'll show you um, what you can do with those um, or skill points rather alright so gather plant fibers so first thing you want to do take a little look around orient yourself I I like this I like where I'm at uh, look over there it looks like there's a tent straight ahead in the distance there. It's pretty cool. Give us a little something. Alright, so what I like to do is take everything. So especially when I first start out, alright, I'll uh, I just collect a ton of plant fiber. Um, and this game does a magnificent job of actually utilizing everything. <laughs> so as you play more and more and you get familiar with the game, you'll find out what you like uh, for your playstyle to be, what kind of stuff you tend to like to craft, um, things like that. So with Bird's Nest, you can find eggs and feathers. Uh, feathers are good for making arrows. Um, and later on, when you don't need them, they're actually really great for selling um, to traders. All right. So I pick up cotton as well. And uh, with cotton, you can craft different things. I also like to pick up the goldenrod. Uh, what I try to do is, as soon as possible, instead of having just water, um, I make goldenrod tea. And what that does is it will boost your wellness. It also helps with dysentery if you get that. Um, and so what you do is you hit tab. All right, and you have these things up top here. All right, so this is your basics section with your crafting. These are the things that you can craft. If you have an idea of something you want to craft, uh, you can type it in here. Let's say forge. We wanted to craft that. We see things with forge. That's forge related. Or if you want to craft just ammo and weapons, you can click that, and then you can also filter down by name. So it's a pretty convenient, easy crafting system. Uh, what you can also do is if you have an item here, you see where it says recipes. A is a shortcut key for if you were to click this. Okay, if you click recipes, it shows you all the things that you can use this item to craft. So that's another way you can find your way to something or learn what you can actually use these to craft. All right, so yeah, pretty awesome there. Uh, this is your character, and this will be all the stuff that you can put on, your clothing. Um, you have stats here, different attributes, uh, more player stats here. You can read through that later. Um, this is your map. I love using the map. Uh, scroll in and out with the mouse wheel, and as you move around on the map, you'll uncover you know different areas and what you can do is let's say you find a point of interest or something like a, a cave in the ground or whatever you can kinda right click on a spot and you can do quick waypoint something like that like if you want to come back to it really quick to remove the waypoint you click that All right. you can have only one quick waypoint anywhere at any time so you know that's good for quick little objectives of yours and then you can also save a waypoint so you can right click and choose one of these things, whatever closely represents what you find. Um, and then once you click on one, you can name it, hit enter, and boom, there it is. And now it's on your map. And so what you can do is over here with your waypoints, all right, you can click this track waypoint. And what that'll do is see up in the top center of the screen with northeast, east, all that. Alright, see that X? That's that uh, location that I'm tracking. 
All right, so that's a quick way that you can track some stuff. All right, oops, always hit escape instead of tab. Go back to the map. I'm going to not track that anymore. All right, and you can play around with different things here. Show on map, remove waypoint, which will remove it completely. So you want to be careful with that because if you remove a waypoint from somewhere, you know, you might have to set it back on the map. <laughs> Um, and then finally you can share a waypoint with friends if you're playing co-op, multiplayer, whatever. Uh, and these are shared waypoints that you have with other players. These are your skills. We'll get into all that in a little bit. There's a ton of crap here. Quests. I don't really use this that much, but it's just uh, once you learn the game, you know, you won't really have to do that. But this kind of tells you what's going on quest-wise. Uh, journal. You can just kind of read whatever is going on, you know, learn more about the game, what's happening. And finally, players, if you're on a multiplayer server or something like that, you can see all the players. Uh, you can track them, and you can add people as an ally or remove them, stuff like that. So that will allow you to see where they are on the map. Um, yeah, so that's pretty much a quick summary of your hot bar up there. All right, we're going to keep rolling through this. All right, we're on day one. You see the time is 9.39. That deer is still over there, which is cool. Um, so now what I can do is I'm going to go ahead and hit tab, type bedroll, and get that crafted here to satisfy this. So we've gathered the plant fibers. We're crafting the bedroll. Placing your bedroll means that if you die, you can spawn at that bedroll or near the bedroll. It gives you the two options. All right, so... Uh, if you place a second bedroll somewhere, that will become your bedroll. I think they're working on adding a way for you to be able to spawn to multiple bedrolls, I think. Don't quote me on that. So we're going to go ahead and just place this bedroll right here. Now, what you can do is your left mouse button. You can click that and rotate items. Let's see if I can get to where you can see it pretty good. Right, and if it's red, you can't place it. So you want it to be like white or green. Okay. Um, so there, we've placed that. We've satisfied that. Um, and what's the next thing we have to do here? All right. And as you see, the whole time I'm pretty much not uh, sitting still. <laughs> I'm always collecting stuff if I can. Um, you know, later on as you get more stuff, you don't have to worry about being so fickle with getting everything, right? But now it says gather wood, okay? So these are good for initially gathering wood because uh, it can take a while, <laughs> as you can see, uh, using your fists to punch stuff here. But as soon as you do, you can start crafting an axe, all right? So I've got the two wood I need. Now I need to find three more small stones, all right? And see this, this like, uh, it's all green and nice here, and then we have this sort of clay-looking dirt area with these boulders. All right, you'll start learning that these little sections that have all this cotton and stuff, they'll be, like, in this biome. It's a good place where you can find some small stones, because small stones are outside of this kind of little area, sort of difficult to find in this biome. But now we have what we need there, so we can say axe, stone axe. I'm going to craft that. It's going to take this long. If you hold shift and you click on anything in here, it puts it in whatever spot is open in your hotbar down here from left to right. So that crafted, I hold shift, I click that, it goes down here, right? All right, now we got this. Um, and what do we need to do now? So, because I've been sitting here collecting all this plant fiber, I can go ahead and do all this stuff here. So let's do plant, f okay. We need to do pants, shirt, hood, shoes, gloves. All right, so I'm going to craft that. I'm going to craft this. And as you can see, you can only be crafting four things at a time. Craft that, craft that, and that. So we're going to keep collecting. All right, see this tree stump here? These are good. You can find some good stuff in here. All right, so I'm hitting E to search stuff. All right, um, and those things are almost finished being crafted. Now, usually when I find things like the empty can, you can scrap that for scrap metal, right? And I'll just always be scrapping stuff typically. But 
at the beginning here, you might want to keep these because you can put water in them and boil water uh, in a campfire and have water. Like if you don't find glass jars yet, um, that's a quick way for you to do that. Alright, so what we're going to do now is we need to wear all the stuff that we just crafted. So um, you can click on it and click or hit W on your keyboard. See, wear W. Alright, I'm going to wear all this stuff. You can also just click on your character here. And for each of those things, if you hold shift and click on these things, it'll go to your character. So the game is smart enough to know that those things should go over here, not down in your hotbar. Alright. Alright. So now that our player is all decked out, alright, now we need to get some more wood. Now that we have this stone axe, as you can see, the process of getting wood is a lot quicker. So there we have enough wood to make a wooden club, but I'm going to go ahead and finish chopping down this tree to just keep getting wood. You pretty much always want to be getting wood and stones. Just always. <laughs> um, and so typically when you chop down trees you'll get like a seed. So uh, you can save those or just kind of plant it right back uh, wherever you chop down that tree. All right, so now I'm going to make a club. So I'm going to type club here, craft. All right, I'm going to resort this stuff how I usually do it. Torch over here, something to heal, food there. Okay, now we can put our club there. All right, now what we need to do is get another small stone so that we'll have enough, there we go, to make a bow. So we type bow, craft, and once that's done, uh, we want to go ahead and start collecting more small stones. So now that you have your stone axe, you can actually, like these boulders here, you can start whaling away at them. They'll give you raw iron stones in the bottom right hand corner there. You can see what you're getting. Um, and yeah, you can actually get a lot of good materials from these. Once you get a pickaxe and stuff like that, you can just spend a day whaling away on these in an area like this in this biome and just get a ton of material. Okay. All right, so with this raw iron, you can scrap it. I'm going to hit S for that to scrap, and this is what your iron will look like when it's scrapped here. All right. I tend to keep that. Um, always at least one iron here, like when I'm scavenging and running out to do things. I'm pretty much always collecting iron. Um, all right, so now what we need to do is craft arrows. So I'm going to go arrow. And uh, you can see w what you need here to make arrows, how many you have, what you need, blah, blah, blah. All right, I'm going to go ahead and make nine arrows. <clears throat> and so now what you need to do once you've made arrows, all right, is you hit R while you're on your bow. And that will load your arrows. And now you'll have arrows that you'll just auto load until you don't have any more. All right, so once you run out, if you make them from scratch again um, after having run out you'll have to hit R again on your bow to you know reload it up so what I'm gonna do is go ahead and try to kill this deer oh, the padlock is good for a multiplayer to keep people from stealing your mini bike after you make one I'm gonna wait for this dude to kinda chill if you get too close they'll start running away from you so I try to stay back a good little bit and they'll eventually start eating. Gosh, he looks like he might be stuck in one of these AI loops where they just walk in circles. Um, which means I don't really want to waste my time with that, but let me go ahead and just see if I can... Alright, so once you hit them, they'll run away from you pretty far. Uh, their awareness of where you are after you've hit them with something um, it's a pretty great distance, all right. So he's still in some kind of weird loop. Okay, there it looks good. Uh, I really don't want to keep wasting time doing this. Anyway, meat becomes pretty important um, initially, and so that's why, like, any time I can. There we go. As soon as I can start killing something, I do. All right. So now you can use your stone pickaxe. 
initially, because this is what you need to do, or stone axe, rather. See in the bottom right-hand corner what we're getting? All right, we're getting animal fat, some meat, all right, animal skin, bone. All right, that's good. Now that we've got a bone, I can type shiv, and you can make a bone shiv. So this will be like your first kind of knife, and knives will let you yield more stuff than that uh, stone axe, right? So from now on, whenever I want to harvest materials from an animal that I kill, I'm going to use a knife, right? So, yeah, after you kill a zombie, the first time you kill a zombie, you can wail away at it with this, get some bones, and just always be making yourself shivs until you find um, a knife later, or you can craft like a hunter's knife. All right, so I'm just running around collecting stuff. Uh, we're getting wood because we need to make some wood frames. So I'm I'm actually even though it's a little bit slower because I'm sitting here explaining things to you, I'm generally doing what I would be doing on my first day. Collecting materials, satisfying these requirements in the upper right hand corner to go ahead and get some points, um, finding some animals, trying to go ahead and get some meat while I can, um, and yeah, so now what I'm gonna do is make those frames, whoops, shift tab, dang it, uh, I always mean to turn that overlay off. Okay, tab. Um, let's go wood frame. Okay, and we're going to make three. All right, those usually get made pretty quickly. Put those here. It wants you to lay them down. So I'm going to lay them. One, two, it doesn't really matter. Three. All right. So see how my axe, my stone axe, um, it's item health, if you will, is almost completely depleted, that green bar, all right, where it says 25 beneath that. Um, so now when I start using this to upgrade the wood frame, so I'm going to hold the right mouse button down to upgrade, okay, actually I don't think that uses any item health, but yeah, so there we go. So that's how you would actually build, all right, um, and upgrade your blocks as you have more and more materials to do that. So, okay, there we go. This item needs repairs or is missing parts. Perfect. So now you can't use your stone axe. You can either craft a new one, right? Stone axe. Good grief, let me type. Um, or you can repair the item. So you click on the item and you go repair. Uh, if you repair your item, this 25 will be some number less, which just means the lower this number is, the faster the item will wear out. Okay, um, And to get that number higher than 25, what you have to do is the skill points that you get. Okay, You have weapon smithing, tool smithing, all this stuff in here. Okay, The weapon and the tool smithing, as you put points into these things, that's how you can have your numbers go up when you craft things. Now you may find a stone axe or a wood club or something like that in some trash, in a zombie, whatever, and they may have higher numbers, which is completely fine. Um, so anyway, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to scrap this. I tend to scrap things to get just a little bit of material back from it and I will just craft a new if I can. Um, and so if you're always pretty much playing by the mantra of picking up all the stones you can and things like that, sometimes like when I'm running around, um, well no, always when I'm running around, let's say I'm going down to that river, right? Uh, or lake, whatever that is. Um, on my way down, if I'm like on a time crunch or something, I'm not gonna necessarily sit here and whittle away at this whole boulder but maybe I want to pick up stuff as I'm running down there. And this will add up for you. Oh, see that zombie down there? So now they're starting to spawn in. But anyway, uh, if I was to run down there, as I'm going down there, I'm just hitting things along the way. Right? Here and there. Getting a stone. Getting some wood. You know, I'm not worrying about spending time chopping down the tree. Alright? And this will add up for you. Um, you're doing yourself a huge favor by doing that type of thing, okay? Um, so as you can hear, my character is getting worn out. You want to be careful with that. See the down in the bottom left-hand corner, the blue there? As I'm holding shift and running, that's my stamina 
depleting. And when it depletes too low, um, you'll start slowing down. And once it gets completely down, see, I can't run anymore. Now I'm even going slower. This can get you in trouble with certain zombies. <laughs> so if you decide to start fighting zombies, or whenever you decide to do that, uh, if you're going for up-close combat, keep an eye on your stamina. Trust me when I say you're going to screw up and forget about that, and you're going to die because of it. But <laughs> it's just part of the experience. I still forget to uh, keep that in mind. Um, but that brings up one point. Um, one of the things that I like to do with my skill points as soon as I can is... Uh, let me go ahead and do the campfire like it wants me to do here. Campfire. Um, I like to... I never do survivor or camel. The reason I don't do those is they keep you from having to eat or drink as much, but there are so many times in this game where you're going to want to eat. You're going to want to drink, whether it's a, a drink that gives you a cooling effect or you need to eat some honey because you got infected by a zombie and the honey will take that away. If you have these things like way cranked up, you can't eat or drink if you're at 100%. So I, I never do that. It's the one thing I wish they would find a way to balance or change. So what I tend to do is, as you run around, you'll build up your athletics, okay? And then you can start putting points into sexual Tyrannosaurus, which you have the stamina of this ancient beast. So basically, um, it just makes your stamina gain a lot quicker. Uh, and I tend to focus on getting that up to two or three um, first thing. Uh, and then after that, I start worrying about whatever else. This is just me. You might have a different approach, right? So I've made the campfire. I'm going to place the campfire. And all right, now that I've done that, uh, you've earned skill points. Cool, cool. All right, so now I've got some skill points. Look at the time. It's 1,500. Um, when you have it set like I do for more daytime, um, it turns night at... 2200 I believe so we have that long until the zombies turn aggro so at night when it's technically nighttime and you'll know it by the sound the game makes when nighttime rolls around if zombies see you they'll start running and it's not a good scenario <laughs> if you're not prepared for it all right, see this zombie here? Let me try to uh, headshot him with an arrow here. I think I just hit him in the back, but as they, as you use your stuff more and more, you'll get skill points for leveling up, right? So you pretty much want to start... Uh, be careful with zombies, like especially if you're first starting this game. You'll have to really get familiar with the AI and, you know, learn how it works. Learn your boundaries. Don't get aggressive too fast. Avoid them if you can. You don't have to start going after zombies. But at some point, uh, as you keep going, you'll start maximizing your time. All right, there's a deer here I also want to try to get. Usually I wait for them to stop, and they'll start like eating and lifting their head up very slowly. Like this. Eh. All right, so... Typically, if you're shooting them in the body, they take forever to kill. I'm not going to worry about it right now. Normally, I would. I would start going and chasing that deer and stalking them. But I'm going to go over here to this tent that we saw. All right. As you saw, I uh, found some trash out here in the wilderness. And I scoped it out to see what was in that trash. Um, and one of the rules I'm breaking right now is I'm not collecting things as I'm going. Um... Again, if you can get into that habit, it's great. You'll thank yourself whenever you need those arrows or you need that last-minute uh, wood frame or something. Um, yeah, so anyway, let's go down to this tent here um, and see the camouflage on it. That means there might be military zombies here, which are... Uh, they have a lot of toughness, so they'll jack you up pretty quick. And they can be difficult to kill. They can take forever to kill if you shoot them anywhere but in the head. 
and even still it takes a number of headshots because of the military helmets they're wearing. Um, we can try to sneak in here. See, whenever you're crouched, it'll tell you if you're detected or not. Um, there may be some zombies in there. All right. There's a crate that we can break open, see what's in it. Nothing in that stump. Break this open here, see what's in here. Could get anything. All right, you hear that zombie? It sees us, maybe. Uh, it says haunted. Okay, so something sees me. Where's the zombie that sees me? Oh, Jesus, right in my face. I was looking up in the hill. <laughs> All right, there we go. So... Oh crap, I'm out of arrows. Let's see if I can shiver real quick. Uh, don't start... Ooh, don't start off doing this typically until you get used to this. Using knives can take forever to kill certain zombies. Uh, I don't use any of the iron arrowheads. I just scrap these always, personally. Um, okay, so I want to build my knife... Uh, experience up. So if you see the points that are going down here on the zombie, these are all experience points that are going towards your knife use, right? So if you don't do anything with a zombie, it'll decay into this form automatically. Um, and so you can keep doing that, uh, this here to keep cutting it. But if you cut away before it decays, that's experience that you get. So try to cut up the zombies immediately after you kill them if you can um, and that will give you more experience points towards that item um, brass candlesticks I tend to scrap those oil is great for creating repair kits um, and uh, Molotov cocktails and some other things Let's see if there's any zombies in here crap I stepped in that fire right there if you stand there for too long you will catch on fire um, let's see here got a potato and let's see if there's anything in this tent here. Kind of dark in here. There could be a zombie chilling. But there's not. Good. Alright, so if you can, avoid eating the old sham sandwiches. Um, they have negative effects on you. Get rid of that. Get rid of that. I'm going to keep that can initially. Um, you know, you can just sit here and work out your own sort of however you want to keep things sorted, you know. Um, inventory maintenance is obviously a thing you'll start running into, and you'll just have to do whatever you would do for that. <laughs> um, you'll find your way. Um, the last thing here, this munitions box, all right. Um, so what you can do is there is a skill that will allow you to uh, rummage through things faster. So this is taking 20 seconds to go through this thing. Typically there's ammo, things like that in these. Um, if we're lucky, we'll get a gun. And... Oh, we got rockets. Okay, so I don't care about rockets right now, but it's great to sell. So whenever we have to find a trader, which as you see in the upper right-hand side, is our next objective, um, we can sell those. And maybe he'll have something that we want. Maybe not. Initially, like when I'm starting off, if I find bullet casings, I scrap those too. Um, I don't need those. I don't need that right now. Okay, so I think that's pretty much it initially. So now what you can do, um, cloth is also a good thing. So these are just made of cloth, these tents. So uh, you can quickly run through them. And as you can see, I'm getting a lot of cloth. Cloth is very useful. You can always be scrapping things that you find, like shirts and hoodies and pants and whatever else, which you will end up finding quite a lot of. So you should never really have a shortage of cloth, um, but, you know, it's great for when you're in a pinch, like bandages. I don't think I checked this bag, did I? I totally didn't see it. My screen's a little bit dark. I don't have my gamma up very high so that I can be surprised by the Zeds. Um, okay, so now what you can do is I think we have enough time to go for that trader. Let's hit M on the map to see where he is. Oh, he's way out here. Um, that's pretty far, but I'm going to do it. 
Let's head out there. All right, so we see the icon up there in our bar. That's where we head. Um, and this is a good opportunity for you to build up your athletics, right? So you just hold shift to run, and you know you see your stamina dropping. But as you do this, it's going to increase your athletics, which you know as you get points into that, then you can start putting points into sexual Tyrannosaurus. Which reminds me, we have some skill points. Plastic, I'll take that. Um, vitamins, cool. I'll usually take those right off the bat because they can up your wellness. And your wellness is kind of like your max HP. Dang it, I keep doing that. Uh, your max HP. So down here, that 100, you can eventually get it all the way up to 200. Alright, so this shirt, initially I'm going to wear that and scrap this because it's better than the plant stuff. Uh, let's go back into here. Skills. Can I put one in here yet? I have five points. Yes, I can. So I'm going to buy that. Okay. So now I have some stuff. Uh, or have that one uh, level of sexual Tyrannosaurus. So this should bode well for while I'm running towards the traitor. All right, and now, um, you know, as you're going on these journeys, just pick, pick up stuff along the way. Um, we're in a good biome here, especially with stuff like the, uh, the tree stumps. Okay, see this guy here? Uh, you'll learn what the different types of zombies are. Um, if you're lucky, when you kill this guy, crap, I need to make arrows. I meant to do that. Arrow. 20, he's coming up on me. Woo! That was close. You'll hear him swing on you. Um, if you get a business, dang it, if you get a business jacket from these guys, they sell for really good money. Alright, and... Um, let's see what we get here. Oh, we got shoes. Okay, whatever, that's fine. So with shoes, we could wear these if we want, because they have better attributes than what we're wearing. But typically what you'll do, let's say we wanted to sell these shoes. You see the sell price up here, 15? If we wanted to sell these shoes, we would want to repair them first. So let's say I have this level 40 pair of shoes, all right? If this level 40 pair of shoes is at maximum item health, see how its item health is about one third right now? Um, if we have that at full, that makes it more valuable when you go to sell it, okay? So you can have a level 600 pair of shoes um, with low item health, and it will not sell for as much as a full item health, even like level one item, okay? So if you plan on selling certain jackets and things like that, um, make sure you repair them first. All right, so with those shoes, I would need um, leather, which I don't have at the moment. I could scrap some of the animal hide to do that, but I'm not going to do that just yet. See that bird? Those vultures? They're like zombie vultures. Um, they're good for feathers. This snowy biome is really good for birds nests and feathers all right so you got to watch out for the lumberjack zombies in this biome because they are very strong and they will jack you up <laughs> all right all right you hear him yelling over there he sees me let's try to take him out real quick uh, we might not make it to the trader that's okay uh, we may make it there but not in time to actually talk to him especially if we start trying to get into fisticuffs with this guy. Um, these zombies have really good... Dang it, I'm always going for headshots, by the way, because it can take forever to kill, especially these dudes with body shots. I'm not going to mess with them, I'm just going to keep going. Um, those guys especially watch out for your stamina, because they walk at such a pace that if you're out of stamina, the fastest you can move is not faster than they can move. And when they start wailing away on you, you're done for. All right, let's try to find this trader. Um, because we are in the snowy biome now, um, you start having to be concerned with if your player gets cold. 
and you'll see some things happen in the bottom left hand corner there as certain attributes are like if you start getting too hot or too cold there's icons to let you know that down there um, and as you can see I'm just making my way to the trader slowly and picking up all kinds of crap along the way um, so there are different things about biomes that you know you specifically want to go there for like here in the snowy biome you have this material here what is it I think coal yeah so you have these lumps of coal um, naturally occurring coal um, you can find these things on the map like let's say we're in the snowy biome you see this little shape here all right these are these like naturally occurring instances of things some biomes have lead uh, and stuff like that so anyway uh, wait I'm going backwards good grief okay so we're getting closer to 22 and you don't have to worry too much about that you can get it down to like the last to where you have like an hour or so left so at 21 all right you see that out there that's the trader so I'm gonna have to go around this lake flashlight yes that's really good um, flashlights uh, torches like uh, head lanterns things like that they actually will um, get the attention of zombies um, from a farther distance than if you have a torch or a candle so you may want to take that into consideration at night um, let's try to get over here to this trader the traders generally close I think it's about 10 minutes oh ah crap I was gonna get that rabbit Jeez, this thing goes way farther out and around than I thought it would. What a pain in the butt. All right, so because of that, I don't think we're going to make it to the trader <laughs> in time. Um, oh. Yes, pigs. This is another great source. Okay, that brings up another point. Listen. Listen to your environment. All right, so until you get your stuff built up, like one headshot with an arrow won't kill this guy. Um, you got to watch out for these guys too because <laughs> they'll hit you pretty hard and make you bleed. Um, but a good source of uh, meat. Go on, dude. Where are you going? All right, so he's not aggro anymore. All right, there we go. So now I'm going to use the shiv here. Get some meat. Get some different stuff. Alright, so we're almost at that 2100 hour. Okay, there we go. Usually I don't like killing animals in games. I'm an animal lover, blah blah blah. But, <laughs> I guess you end up getting used to the sounds they have in the game of certain things. The rabbits sound the worst. They just sound pitiful whenever you try to kill them. So I usually don't kill rabbits. But I guess I'm a softy heart. Anyway, alright, so... What I'm going to go ahead and do is start preparing for night. Now, in these uh, stumps here, what you can find sometimes are night vision. All right, scrap that. I'm going to wear these. Cool, and scrap that. Um, and when you find night vision, that's when you can really start getting out and about at night. Um, the flashlight and the head torch. Oh, cool, we have more points. The um, head torch that you get. Um, you can use those to run around at night and everything, but like I said, zombies can see you from farther away. I'm just looking for like kind of a flat spot of land to start building some stuff on. Alright, so what I'm going to do is because I've been running around collecting wood and all that stuff, I have enough material to let me go ahead and eat this. Actually, let's do this real quick. Uh, put this can here. I'm going to go down to this water source. Usually when I like build somewhere, I like to be near a water source. There's a glitch in the game that you can have basically an infinite water source, but I don't like to do that. All right, so there we go. I just when you get close enough to the water, you can right click and then so I filled the can with water. You could also hit the snow here and 
get water uh, by using that snow whenever you have a campfire. So let's go ahead and do wood frame. Okay, wood frame, how many can we make max? 98. I should only need like, I don't know, let's just go 40. And whatever you don't use, you can scrap. So I'm going to craft that. Um, move this here. Alright, and go ahead and build a little something real quick. It doesn't have to be elaborate by any means, just something that will... Alright, I'm just going to use like the flattest part that I can instead of having to worry about digging to level some things out. Um, now you might have zombies walk by at night and things like that. Actually, I'm going to go one more wide. Four, five. Alright, so I'm going to build four high. Dang it. There we go. Okay, so now that we're four high, we can take these corners. Alright, and what I'm going to do is do it again here. Okay. I'm doing a crap job building right now. Just got up. And, uh, need to get in that game in spirit, if you know what I mean. Okay, so once we get built up here, um, I'm actually going to take the corner pieces, because whenever you're all closed in, um, okay, so that sound means it's nighttime, obviously. And, uh, I need more wood frames, so let's go, like, 20 more craft. And the good thing is you craft wood frames pretty quickly. Alright, so, as we get this crafted here, now what I'm going to do is start, oh, let's, I'm just going to repair it real quick. How much wood do we have here? 73. I think that'll be enough to get done what I want to get done. Okay, um, now this is kind of risky, but I'm going to go ahead and put a torch here so I can sort of see what I'm doing. Um, and as you build this, what you can do is uh, we'll place a bedroll here and then not worry about where we were at before. Now the snowy biome, it can get snowy and cold here, but right now, typically in the beginning of the game, they lay low on when they uh, start um, adding in when it gets too cold, too hot, things like that. Different weather type things. Now, when I also went to build here, I looked to see where zombies were. Uh, I didn't see any around. There was one sort of close, but not quite. Um, but this is a good time for you to just listen to things. Um, and I'm building more elaborately than I really need to be right now for the beginning. I mean, all you really need is something for you to fit in. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, so now that I have cut more wood there, I am reinforcing these things. And this will be enough to keep the zombies from being attracted to you. And for things like Torchlight, they do have to be pretty close um, to seem to be aggroed by it. Later in the game, you'll come across Screamer Zombies, and they are absolutely triggered by light, especially Forges, whenever you have a Forge. There is kind of a what I think is a bug in the game, where it doesn't matter um, how far down in the ground or whatever you have your Forge built, um, they'll know it's there, and they will just sit there and aggro. And when the screamers scream, it makes other zombies spawn up near you and come after you. So, that's a thing that you'll probably have to deal with. I don't know if that's something they're going to get fixed in Alpha 17, so depending on when you see this video, that may or may not be fixed. Um, so... Up in the top there, you see your time. 
uh, 4 a.m. is when daylight will be again, right? Um, so I have pretty much until then to do all kinds of stuff. All right, so that 25%, that means I'm thirsty. I'm going to take a sip of some water here. I'm going to also nom. The can might drop on the ground. Nope, I had room for it because of only having one of those. Cool. I'm going to drink again. All right. So that's the freebie they give you. That's done. All right, so I'm actually going to take this torch and place it a little bit lower so that I can place these. All right, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and I need two more wood frames. All right, place, place. Actually, I need one more. All right, and then we can build a secure wood door craft. All right, now you can use the left mouse button to rotate if you want, which will make your door open and close a certain way or be more in than out, whatever you want. All right, and then right mouse button to place that. And um, actually, we don't need open the door there. We don't need that one, that one, or that one. Okay, so I'm gonna finish doing this. Now, something I would want to do as well is I think having this snowy biome ground technically means I'm not safe from certain cold attributes whenever they make the biome get really cold. So um, if I was really giving a crap about this place, I would have built up higher and I would have started by putting wood frames down here, right? Uh, but this is good enough to start. We can reinforce this door if we want. Okay, so did I make another campfire? I didn't. Let's go ahead and do campfire craft. And once that's done, let's see how much wood we have. Three, that's just fine. I'm going to place that there. I'm going to do another bedroll. Craft that. Um, I'm going to go ahead and... Uh, let's... I think technically if I place these here like this... Uh, hang on, let me go get more wood again real quick. If I place those there and I hop up on them and stand on them, I think that will technically get me out of any territory of, you know, if it gets too cold for your character outside. Um, you don't need to reinforce it. I'm just doing that. Now I'm going to put my bedroll on that. And technically, I guess I could stand here if I started getting cold because of the ground or whatever, right? All right, so now... Um, I think we, uh, if we place a piece of wood here in the campfire for fuel. So what I did is I did a left click and hold and drag out and then release. And now you can move this around. And then I right clicked over here to put one in there. And you can keep doing that. You know, the right click is how you just add one. If you just right click on an item and you drag down, it'll take half of that item. Okay, so left click hold drag you can move it around right click hold drag you take half of the item and then if you just left click you place all or if you right click you place one at a time right so over here boiled water i can make some of that i have seven all right um, your water bottles will stack when they're filled with water your water that's in a can will not stack so you know, as you make more of these, it'll fill up each one of these slots. And then let's say I have seven I'm making, it'll stop if it can't make any more than that. And then as I'm putting them in my inventory here, you know, you need seven slots available for each can of water. So maybe you don't want to go ham with the water. I'm going to go ahead and do scrap on this can here. Boiled water. All right, see how it's going to take a minute and 10? I have 5 minutes and 50 seconds worth of fuel time here. So this is how you can really sort of 
get nitty gritty with how much of your material you're using time wise to do something. You know, maybe I want to leave for like two minutes to go chop some wood and not have any excess wood burning to make this water. You know, that's how you can do that thing. For more of these recipes to open up, you of course need the items themselves, or you might need the cooking pot, uh, the grill, or the beaker. And you can find those out and about, or you can craft these two. I can't remember if you can craft a beaker or not. I don't think you can. No. You find a beaker out and about um, in pharmacies and supply drops, um, typically. So, anyway, so I'm going to go ahead and get all those cooking. I'm going to scrap this one wood frame and see how I have some meat here. I can make charred meat, so it's basically throwing it on the grill. The charred meat is better than nothing, especially if you're hungry. Um, but the best thing that you can make, the most bang for your buck, is bacon and eggs. So for that, you need your meat and eggs. Okay, and I think you need the grill, which we don't have right now, so we can't make it. But the bacon and eggs gives you a wellness boost. Okay, um, there's meat stew, which gives you a big wellness boost. However, it costs like five meat, five this, five that. Well, if you used five meat for bacon and eggs, the total amount of wellness that you get from that is more, technically, right? All right, so see how there's two more here, but I only have the slot for one, so I'm going to go ahead and just drink one of these. All right, drink one more. Um, and now what you can do if you want is make a chest secure storage chest. We're going to craft that. And you got to be careful because if zombies start coming after you, like every so often, random hordes will spawn in and just kind of head your direction. And if they bump into your whatever shelter you have, they might start trying to break in. Um, so be careful where you place this because they might hit it and break it, which all your stuff will drop out and you can collect it, but <clears throat> that can be a bad time. <laughs> so... Uh, you can try to reinforce something. I'll usually maybe stick it up on the wall like that. All right, and that's where we can start placing some things that maybe we don't want to do anything with right now, right? So all these things I'm not really concerned about. We'll keep the arrows. I'm not worried about the cash. Um, I'm going to go ahead and scrap that. Put the torch there. Okay. So, now that we've got that, all right, here's all of our water. That's good. Put some water here. Now, if we want to do water in a glass jar, we can go down to the water real quick and fill that up and get bottled murky water. Okay, uh, let's see. Let me actually use the flashlight here. Hello, flashlight. F, okay, yeah. Um, if you get in the water, you'll get wet, and that can, in the cold biome, that can be a not very good thing if you're not prepared for it, okay? So, um, you know, I'm just making sure I'm at the water line here, and now I'm going to right-click. Okay. Go back in here, close it up. Um, we can't do anything with this bottled murky water in here yet, uh, because we need a cooking pot to make bottled water, okay? But you can use bottled murky water for different recipes, too. So remember, you can click on an item and then click recipes and see all the stuff you can make with that. So you don't necessarily just want to always turn all your bottled murky water into regular water, right? So I'm going to go ahead and, uh, let's see, where was that? Put that in there, put that there. Your painkillers, you can take those to slowly gain health. Um, Eating food will also help you slowly gain health. Uh, this will severely dehydrate you, so your hydration is negative 30. So you might want to make sure... I mean, you should always have food and water um, whenever you're going out and about, if you can help it. Um, all right, so... It is 2.30 a.m., so this is kind of a good little spot that I'm in right now um, for your first day and first night. This gets you set up, a little home base. You've got your bedroll. You can spawn back in here. You've got a place to store things, a place to cook things. 
Um, and so what I would do from here um, is whenever it gets to technically be morning to where the zombies won't aggro, I would head back out and go to the trader. Um, and then that will complete all your little quests that you need to do, but then that's where you can go and sell, buy, um, and maybe you want to build your own little base somewhere right next to a trader so that you can always have him close to you, you know. Um, the next thing that I would do after doing that is um, I would want to find a city, um, try to find a town somewhere with buildings because then what you can do is um, let's say the seventh night the horde is getting ready to attack what you do is you go to wherever that building is home whatever you can build a ladder um, build a ladder like wooden ladder um, or what I'll do is just do uh, wood frames because you can easily pick them back up um, well, I only have enough wood to make one, so I'm going to go ahead and craft that. But basically what you would do is take your wood frame, and let's say this was a really tall house, right? Um, <clears throat> you take your wood frames. Actually, let me go ahead and get some more wood because I really want to show you this. This is a good way to help you on, like, your first night. Oops, I'm crawling. Uh, your first horde night for you to not have to deal with it. Uh, so you can either find somewhere and try to make like spike traps, logs, and just see how you fare, see if you can survive. Um, but that kind of leading up to the seventh night, that makes your trajectory pretty specific towards building your defenses. I like to get a ton of items and get really stacked with whatever I can. Um, before I start worrying about dealing with the hordes. So I usually don't deal with Horde Knight until like the third or fourth one, and then I start dealing with it, right? I'm gonna make four more of these. All right, so let's say this was a really tall building. You would just make a ton of wood frames, and then you can jump place, jump place, jump place, right? All the way up to the top of the building, and then once you get to the top of it, like let's say I'm at the top of the building here then you can look down and pick up your wood frames as far down as you can and the zombies won't get up there right so then you just hang out on the top of that house or whatever for that first horde night you know and maybe this is the time where like hey over the course of the seven days I have a lot more skill points um, and you can start reading up on your skill points in here and see what you want to allocate stuff to um, you know things like that so you don't have to just sit there bored out of your mind on horde night if you're just waiting for it um, there's things that you can certainly do even if it's alt tabbing out of the game to let it run and you know doing whatever <laughs> so anyway um, yeah, that should set you up for your first day and your first night. Um, get lost in the game, get beat up by zombies, screw up, get hot, get cold, die. <laughs> Do it all. Get the full experience. So, anyway, uh, I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you found it useful. I absolutely love this game, and I hope that you will love it as well. I think the next evolution for you might be, if you tend to be into multiplayer, it's really fun to start playing with other people you could do pve with other people so it's you and the rest of the server doing what you're doing here in single player against the environment or you could do pvp um, and that can be pretty crazy anyway so that sound meant it is morning which means i could safely go out and head to the trader out there see what he's got blah 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 this is kind of a ridiculous scenario here to be honest with you so um <laughs> yeah. All right. Thanks again for watching, and uh, give it a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. Don't forget to subscribe. Let me know if you want to see more videos like this, and uh, see what I can do. So we'll talk to you later. Take care.